sometimes you get it you you get it right on the first time but it depends on exactly what you're writing well, and even I take it when I say corrections I mean like I guess how cognizant are you of what you say like do you write and go whoa sometimes <laughs> I just I just, did, I, just <laughs> did, I just did this record called Thinking Out Loud where I rapped for for seven minutes and <laughs> I put my phone number in the record you know I mentioned <laughs> Yeah, like stuff like that. I had to sit real, back. Very real, real, real. Stuff. I had to sit back and like, yo, what the hell am I doing? You know, mentioning <laughs> Kid Cudi, Asher Roth, all these people, Puff, like things like that. You can just tell I just wrote it, and I sat back and I'm able to record myself, which is a blessing. You know, before I go into a, a, another studio, so I recorded it and I listened to it and I was like, I gotta fix this. I can't <laughs> put this out like this. But at the same time, I was like, yo, it's called Thinking Out Loud. It's genuine. It's real. Let me just throw it out to the world. And, you know, people have been hitting my phone for the last two, three days. But it's all it's been all love. Nobody wanted to shoot me or nothing. I'm surprised. <laughs> but um, Maybe because you mentioned <laughs> Kid Cudi and Asher Raw. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who likes who about out there, man. I love everybody. But, um, you know, sometimes you do double back and, and, and you try to get it correct. Like, there's records on here that I wrote four times. Like, my soul, I... Wrote it, rewrote it, came back to it. Ended up using the same first verse. Um, other times, you you know what exactly you want to say, and sometimes the picture just gets painted. And as you're saying it, you see it, and you don't want to alter it because that's the way it came out. Like it just, you know, it came from from a higher place. And um, you know, it's it's different. Like if I'm doing a verse on somebody else's thing. I might just try to say some witty lines or, you know, try to change up some flows here and there. It's, um, the process is never really the same. Sometimes I'm in the kitchen cooking pancakes. Other times I'm, um, you know, inside a lady at the I'm same tired. time. <laughs> yeah, so it's different. Yeah, Kane, um, Lauren Hill, um, Nas, uh, Jay, Buster. Um, CeeLo and Andre 3000 mostly Eminem too some people like like you know Biggie was one of my biggest inspirations because of his storytelling and his ability to to take the small words and make big pictures and I always thought that was crazy the way he could have stories you know a song like Story to Tell and have the whole club be able to recite it you know and I thought that was crazy um, people like like Nas just his, his ability to, to have wordplay and take songs um, like One Love or, or I Gave You Power and use symbolism that people can really see and paint pictures. Um, somebody like Buster, the way he becomes the hidden instrument in the song, I always like that, you know. He doesn't really get much love for his lyricism, but at the same time, he comes with these crazy, crazy flows. And the same with Lauryn Hill. Like, I used to listen to a lot of these songs, a lot of these albums, and listen to how every song, they would flow differently on every track. And that was important to me. Um, somebody like Eminem, who I think is is one of the greatest rappers that we have today, he's just um, he pays a lot of attention to words, you know. And it just it amazes me that he puts so much into every line and every verse, and is able to twist and combine these words and um, and get people's reactions. It's really crazy. I think it, it is the um, the acclaim for people to as for people to just get it you know it's not really about the sales although of course I would want sales because that would keep me alive but I, I want people to get it I want people to walk away from it and and feel something um, if you if you take one of the messages on there you know just one and it makes you do something you know if you got a kid that you ain't call in a while and you hear this and you want to do that or um, you listen to a record like like I believe and, and you think twice about your, your spirituality versus religion, anything like that, man. There's been records that have made me call my father. You know, it's been songs that have made me tell my mother I love her. And for me, you know, I wanted to do that for people. And that's, you know, that doesn't come back in a stat sheet. You know, it doesn't come back as a, on a billboard chart. Like, yo, he touched the life. That doesn't happen. But if if I can feel that, if I can get that, if I can see it come back to me, that means a lot, you know. And on the record last time where I talked about walking away from everything, if if it doesn't work out, if people don't receive it well, that, you know, that was genuine. 
I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and, and keep on going and be 45 years old trying to you know get on and get popping and and still try to make records like I think if if people don't get it you know I can I can I can bow out and move on but for right now this is this is me bearing my soul so a lot a lot is going into it um I do want it to open the door for maybe one more CD um but but if not I'm I'm good so it was definitely a defining moment yeah definitely okay. definitely okay I'm going wherever, wherever y'all want me to go. You in a country right now, you seeing this, you want me to come to your country, your city, your town, I will be there. How do they get at you? How do they get at me? Um, you can hit me on Facebook, MySpace, Twitter, S-H-A-S-T-I-M-U-L-I. -I. Hit me up, man. Absolutely, right. absolutely. Any last words, anything you want to say to your fans, to your naysayers, to <laughs> Hove? <laughs> we love everybody, man. <laughs> we got the fans. Listen, go out and get the album. Um, I want you to buy it, but if if you want to download it and steal it, hey, that's just how the world works. Um, I put a lot into it. I put a lot into my career, and it's not just about me. You know, it's it's about it's about you. It's about your kids. It's about music as a whole. Like things aren't the same as they used to be and and we need to make some type of change and I just want to I want to be on the on the path on the forefront to that so you got a lot of artists out here that are saying something that are trying to um you know trying to do something different rather than what you hear all the time rather than what's thrown in your face and we always talk about the golden era of hip hop and then during that time we didn't have to think much it wasn't so many questions about you know what direction music is going and why is hip hop this and, and hip hop that and if we give certain artists a chance or certain music a chance and we open our ears, then there's a possibility we can go back to those days where there's a lot of versatility and a lot of variety and, and maybe our kids can hold on to this music for another 10 to 20 years. But um, just open your minds, man. That's it. Stop rapping, man. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> nah, for real though, if you want to do it, just really, really figure out if this is something that's for you. You know, like really, really figure out what you want to say because it's not a quick buck anymore. You know, five, 10 years ago, it might have it might have felt like you could just jump in and get some cash money type of bread or some, you know, a masterpiece situation. But now it's not like that. You got to really want to do it. And even if you just want to make some Soldier Boy records or you want to make some type of statement, like define yourself before you get into it and know that it's gonna take a lot of work and a lot of grinding and um and some money from somewhere, you know. But um either that or quit. <laughs> help. Help the game. Demand stimuli. Go on chainmusic dot com, um bestbuy dot com, you can order it. They'll they'll send it out to you. But if you can't find it somewhere, whatever store you're in, just go up to them and ask for it because that helps us out in the long run. You know, shout out to E1, um, formerly Koch. But as you know, this is my first album. So without sales history, it's tough to get in a lot of stores. And you have to understand that, you know, these stores are not just going to take somebody that they might have seen on a mixtapes, but hasn't, you know, they, their name hasn't come across the skew, the sheet in the, in the store. So why would they take it? But if people out there have a demand for it and they and they ask for it, and we sold out, you know, Fat Beats, we stole, sold out a couple of Best Buys in, in Maryland and Brooklyn. People were calling me. So I'm thankful for that. But, um, you know, not not just with me, with other artists, too. You know, just ask ask for them, demand them, because it, it helps us out in the long run, and we can pretty much make the independence just as big as the majors, man.